We're now very happy to be joined by a special guest visiting Israel from the United States. Susan Weikers has dedicated her life voluntarily to the state of Israel and is the international treasurer of the state of Israel bonds. Hello and welcome, my friend. Hello, Emily. Wonderful to be here. It's so good to see you in studio instead of uh, you saying hi from uh, exactly. overseas watching the show. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm happy to be able to have you here because you are someone that I look up to and, and really you are such a role model to so many of us you've been volunteering for the state of Israel for for decades please I start with your story and why you being born with the state of Israel has defined your life for so long well I think that it's it's a simple story and I'm sure it's shared by tons of people uh, I came to uh, Jewish life prenatally my dad was fortunate enough to be sent out of Germany as a, a teenager right before things really went bad, although many people in his family perished in the Holocaust. And my mom was born in New York of a Russian father, a Polish mother, both who left, whose family left during the pogroms. So I came to my Jewishness very, very young. And I came to my first um, realization that it was fun being Jewish when I was a member of Young Judea. Mm -hmm. I loved being in a club where people actually talked about Jewish life and, and talked about Israel. Israel uh, has really been the center of my life because, as you say, I grew up with the state of Israel. I also realized very, very early on that um, my first trip to Israel, the presence of the Holocaust was so vivid when I visited Yad Vashem. And other than the pictures, which were disturbing, it was the shoe. It was the child's shoe in that loan case. Being involved with Israel bonds when it mattered so much. I know I got bonds for my bat mitzvah, like building Israel when nobody was here and seeing how far this country has come and now to see where we are. Well, I just loved the whole idea that bonds were an investment. You were really, when someone invests in you, they believe in you. Mm. Uh, it's one thing to give money and it was Golda who said that this is not a substitute for tzedakah. Charity is a way of Jewish life. Mm -hmm. But after you've given all the money you can give away, you can still invest some money. And investing means that you believe in who you invest in. And I think, for me, believing in Israel was the easiest sell in the world. I used to tell people, we have to take everybody there because nobody's buying a diamond until they see it. Mm -hmm. I can tell you I have the most gorgeous diamond in my pocket. You're not giving me a penny until I show it to you. Wow. And uh, Susan, let's talk about the current climate. I mean, you're living in the United States. We're seeing so much um, stress, tension, not only in Israel, but also in the United States. Explain why this rise in anti-Semitism is so palpable. Well, I think that you really have to take a look historically. And I think what happens to most of us is that we forget our history. Uh, we're in a very dark place. We're in a very dark place worldwide. Uh, we go through the light and then we go into darkness. Uh, there's a lot of upheaval and people have really lost the capacity to communicate. And because of that, we are now us and them. And this is worldwide. This is in Israel. This isn't just the United States. Governments all over the world are looking strange to us. Those of us who have been fortunate to live in a very light stage. And I've often said, we go through hills and valleys. Well, we had a beautiful hill and we are sinking into a valley. Wow. Explain also, like we're seeing in the United States, there's a lot of, you know, Jews that are, you know, obviously progressive. Oh, we're, we're Jewish, but we don't agree with Israel, and Zionism becomes this political construct. Um, explain, like, how 
serious is this? And people really understand what it means to be a Jew and that Zionism is not a political construct that people like to attach well, it if you as. If you can explain Zionism to the Jewish community worldwide, Emily, then you will have a new job. <laughs> I'll win a Nobel Prize. Because <laughs> that is practically an impossibility. Although, I will say that there are a lot of cop-out things. Uh, I'm not really a racist, but I just, you know, and I, I have some Jewish friends. Uh, I, you know, I love Jews, but I don't care for Israel. Uh, oh, I love Israel, but, you know, religious Jews bother me. I mean, you can hear it all. The reality of life is a Jew is a Jew. You are either born a Jew or you become a Jew. And we're fortunate in the Jewish religion to be accepting of that. I think that a lot of our leaders worldwide need to look at themselves and say, what has made me cause my people to believe that everyone is the other? Mm -hmm. And I witnessed this not only in Jewish life, but growing up in a world especially in the United States, where blacks were not accepted, and where there were signs in restaurants that said, no Jews, no dogs, no blacks. Wow. Well, you don't forget that. You only have to see that sign once in your life. I also believe that there are liberals and conservatives. What a horrible title. There are people. We are so stressed over, oh, you're too liberal. Oh, no, you're too conservative. Oh, no, you, you don't believe the way I believe. The reality of life is we're very simple people. We need to gain our respect for each other. And I believe that that's what we're losing. As far as the anti-Semitism in the United States, which is, in my mind, shocking, completely shocking. I grew up believing that I was protected as a Jew. We celebrated holidays by walking out on the street to synagogue with apples for Simchas Torah. I don't understand how we got to this place, but this is where we are, and we better deal with it. I do think that um, the the politics in Israel affect some, but not all. Although I will tell you that people are deeply concerned when the rhetoric comes to play on who is a Jew. Because that is such a hot button for world Jewelry, having nothing to do with politics, having nothing to do, uh, someone said to me, well, Israel's had five elections. Well, the United States has an election every two years. I mean, you know, okay. Uh, politics is an ugly game, and some people really thrive on doing it. But I think politicians also have lost respect. I was distressed, personally distressed, at the statement that the new um, minister of diaspora made in Texas last week when he was asked about the fact that who is a Jew had come up. And he said, in a way, I believe he was trying to tap down the, um, the concern. He said, we're not doing anything now. We're going, and, and his next remark was, we're going to set up a committee. Well, that's a hot button for everybody. A committee, a committee is now going to decide whether or not someone is a Jew. I don't want to be uh, tragic in my thinking, Emily. However, the real committee was set up at Vansi with a group of German officers and they, in a despicable way, decided Who's who a is a Jew. I believe that what Israel has to take a look at at 75 years old, is where she is. Israel, for years, begged Jews to make Aliyah. Israel wanted the numbers because wars were so difficult and Israel was losing so many people. 
Well, Israel is now the largest Jewish population in the world. Wonderful, what an achievement. Pat ourselves on the back. But don't turn around and say, oh, well, suddenly we don't need you. Israel did an airlift. Israel brought all the Ethiopians right here. We are a compassionate people and a compassionate state. Israel has to take a look at its roots. Thank you so much, as always. It's such a pleasure to see you. Emily, it's always a pleasure. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming in.